Good morning. This is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. It's a long time since I've actually uh, done any videos. When I say a long time, it's at least a, a couple of months, I would think. Um, I just thought I'd uh, try to start doing a few videos again, although it, it is it is rather difficult at times due to the fact of the amount of work we do actually get in. We've really just got to get on with it if you if you know to to actually move the stuff out the way. Um, this this particular clock is a triple fusey bracket clock now probably made i would say pos probably between 1850 and 1890 that sort of date there's actually no markings on it to tell us or no name plates or nothing uh, to tell us uh, who it actually was but as i say it's a really really good quality uh, solid what appears to be british movement triple fusey it looks to be in original condition, uh, as does the clock itself. There's quite a, a lot of work needed doing on the clock, really. Uh, the movement's going to get serviced, and as you can see, it's it's a, it's a bit of an undertaking, really. I mean, it's, it's it's you can't be taking it lightly. I mean, the way you've got to handle this is you've got to really take your time. Uh, that's the first thing, and you've got to take plenty of pictures now what i also do with the clock now the clock came came to us and it really needs a service it was out of beat and stuff so what we did what we tend to do is we tend to get the clock running uh, and then check it out as you can see i have a cable tie uh lifting actually in order to operate the uh, uh the chime train continuously uh, and so what i do is i wind it right all the way up um, and then I'll, I just let it run through consistently, continually till it all the way runs down. And I do that with every train, uh, obviously in order to sort of check out, you know, just let's see what's going on with it. Does, is there anything stopping it? You know, and then we list all them problems. And then as as we're going through the service, we're gonna we're, we're gonna have a look at what's going on there. Uh, I'm happy to say with this particular clock, everything run through okay. There was no real problems. But it is it is obviously in need of service. I mean, if we just turn it round, you know, the, everything is. It just needs a service. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of dirt and you know one thing and another, dust and dirt and as you can imagine, um, and so we're going to pretty much take that to pieces. And I will try to do other videos as we t as we dismantle the clock in order to go through that procedure. But the one of the main important things of this type of clock is really take plenty of pictures, make notes. Uh, don't don't assume really, unless you're a really really experienced uh, clockmaker. I mean, you know, as I say, but we always do anyway. I mean, we always do anyway. I I always take a lot of photographs, and I always, uh, I, you know, I, everything. I mean, I I don't leave nothing to chance and. Sometimes we have Steve working with us and he does exactly the same. Um, we take all the pictures on the one camera uh, so that we can, um, you know, we can look at it any time. That camera stays in here and we have a look at it any time. But as I say, it's triple fusey. It has got its chains. Chains will be taken off and they'll be soaked in oil and then they'll be cleaned properly. The whole clock will be cleaned by hand. Um, reason being this. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, disagreements on whether you should put a clock in uh, an ultrasonic cleaner or not. We we sort of pretty much anything we'd say after about 1910, 1920. We, you know we may we may use an ultrasonic cleaner on that um, just to maybe get the bulk of the dates off. And then there, there there always there always is some hand finishing. Always um, there's, there's no other way to get that shine really. I mean. Unless you're going to use a, a really an ammonia based cleaning uh, solution, the older cleaning solutions, and obviously, you know, they're, they're very heavily based in, on ammonia, and and so that's what actually shines brass up. Um, I've not found anything yet. Maybe someone could chime in and tell me if there is something that actually shines brass up without using ammonia. I mean, that, that would be uh, that would be a, a good thing. But I've not, I've not, and I do know, I, I do know a lot of the older clockmakers, and you know, pretty much they're all of the same thing. It's it's an ammonia based situation which causes the brass to shine up. I would imagine. But you've got to understand as well from from our point of view. We're, we're, 
we're a business that's in it, we, we need to make money uh, in order to keep keep things running to pay for websites and, and everything and generally just to live especially now the way things are going up and up and up in price i think our materials is near enough doubled in price now so we've got to you know we haven't got the time to spend you know two months on one clock and you know once we start a clock i mean it's got to be done and a clock like this will you know will take quite a bit of time but you know it'll be once it's started it'll be turned around pretty quickly and then it'll be tested for a couple of weeks and just to make sure and see what's going on and then we'll uh, finally give the customer a call um the case on the clock needs a little bit of restoration a, a bit a bit of the beading has actually come away uh so i mean it's not a matter of just sticking it on with glue i mean you've got to remove all the old glue uh carefully because obviously you're dealing with a, a, a polished case and we don't want to take anything away for the, from the case we don't want to have to repolish the case we want to be able to you know just put the stuff back and leave it pretty much as it's always been the dial needs resilvering it's only a small dial so you know that, that's not a great deal of trouble but we, we will be doing that for them um and as i say this will be serviced i mean i'll take the springs out of the cylinders and i'll check them and i'll i'll, I'll make a i'll make a judgment on them and uh, the cylinders are really big cylinders on this clock so it's going to be a bit of a concern if uh, the springs do need changing i honestly don't believe they do but i think if they do uh, you know i don't think our winder is uh, capable with that so i'm possibly going to have to have a word with a few people i know and maybe get them to help me out with some kind of winder to get to to, to fit the springs um but other than that, yeah, it's a really good quality clock. I, I, I really enjoy working on on that type of this type of clock. Um, it can be sometimes I've had a, I've had a few challenging ones, by the way, and you know, uh, it, it, it was still quite enjoyable, but you know, a little bit scary at times. I mean. Trouble is with, as you can appreciate with a with a, with a lot of clockwork, is you have to dismantle things if if you don't if it's not right. So it's as I say that that thing of being very methodical and you know going through it carefully, checking things out, taking notes. It's it's really important that you do that. Really, really important that you that you do that. I mean. You know, we we repair such a vast amount of clocks, different types of clocks, that you know we we we're sort of not specialists in any one particular clock. I mean, you know, I could say you know literally I can fix Hermes with my eyes closed. Really, I mean, you know, I don't, I wouldn't even have to take photographs. But you know, we don't just do Hermes. I mean, we have such a, a variation of clocks from French, German, um, American. We 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 pretty much you know we we will we will repair most half decent quality clocks i mean this is a quality clock so obviously there's quite a bit of money involved with this clock but you know we do we do repair some of the cheaper stuff and, and really that's because of of sentimental value reasons to the customer i mean you know it's very difficult there's very few clock makers now so it's it's very hard to uh say to a customer oh we, oh, we don't want to repair them and, and, and you know sometimes I'm, I'm very aware that you know it's 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 not it's not the best financial decision that we make. But at the end of the day, I mean, we are trying to provide some kind of service. We have a fantastic reputation. And so I like to keep that. So sometimes, I mean, you know, we are repairing, um, you know, some lesser clock, should we say. And I'm, I'm very aware that, you know, we could probably get a lot more money if I called out and, pick clocks up and stuff like that we could pick really pick and choose but you know i don't really call out i have so much work i need to do in, in the workshop all the time and i enjoy my work as well so i enjoy the restoration side of it i'm going to do another video shortly uh to do with a, a smaller french clock um that we're going to be doing some work on it's, a, it's made by mogan um so i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little bit a little bit on that it's a very small banjo type clock um and it's very ornate it's one of the most ornate i've seen but it does need quite a bit of restoration it needs a restoration on the casework quite a bit and uh, so i'm gonna gonna do a little 
little video little video on that and hopefully as i was saying to you i'm gonna try to do a few videos on this as we're dismantling the, the the clock as you can see um it's going to be obviously we're going to put the stands on the back of the clock as we go and then we've got pins here obviously we'll be winding this all down and taking the the um the fusey chains off uh, so that's what we'll do obviously for safety that's the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, you know you're going to wind it down and take them fusey springs off uh, we'll put them in we have a, a system where we put them in little uh, they like watch watch uh, makers things but they have little tubs in them you can buy them off cousins i think or you can buy them off ebay it's one of the one of the things and we'll just put the chains in them and they'll be labeled uh to which fusey which which fusey drive it was uh we'll be doing that uh we'll separate most of the bits and pieces into sections even if we have to use three tubs as i say it's a clock like this it's all about organization and, and keeping everything dead right because when you put it together you want it to go together and you want it to be running you don't want to have to keep on taking it to pieces because then you know you're adding the risk of other things being wrong so that's what that's that's how we'll 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 tackle this job um but as, as i was saying to you uh early on just a minute ago rather um stands on the back obviously you're gonna have to remove your hammer sections the stands will be more the longer type we have we have shorter type we have longer type will be the longer type to go on there we will also put um some kind of protection because we need to hold this tight so we're going to probably put some little tiny pieces of cardboard in so we don't damage or put marks on the movement um then we'll we'll remove everything in good order and put it all separately again taking plenty of pictures plenty of pictures uh that's what we'll do so you know comes off with pins just everything very methodical really a really you know a take take your time uh you know consistent job um i'm gonna try and get pretty much most of the things done once i start this movement pretty much done in in in, uh, in one day i'm gonna when i say that i mean the movement uh cleaned and then re-put back together mo in, in mostly in one day maybe maybe over two days but i don't particularly want to dismantle it and then put it in it you know in tubs and stuff and then come back to it at a later date because the thing is once you your mind's set because you do that many different types of clocks once your mind's set on this one clock i, I believe that's the best way is to is to carry on with that your mind is there then your mind is with that clock and so carry on with that clock and, and carry on going through but anyway this is john from clock repairs merseyside so i'm going to sign off now uh, and hopefully I'll come back with another clock. We're, we're actually going to be doing some work on some restoration work. And it's a bit different, really, uh, but I, I'll go. I'll go through that. But yeah, as I say, this is a lovely triple fusey bracket clock, and hopefully I'll be doing a few more videos. So, speak to you soon. Thank you.